What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're gonna take a look at the Shadow Power PC upgrade plan here for Shadow PC. And this is something I'm excited to get into as Shadow really kind of helped kick off my channel a bit back in 2020 and really got me into cloud PCs. And that's why I still kind of cover them here on the channel. But it was disappointing last year to have to step away from Shadow for a little while as the boost here really aged and it wasn't worth me covering. I was waiting for the Shadow Power upgrade here. And now that it's here, it's been a lot of fun and I really think it's worth it, but we'll get more into that as we go into this overview. On their website, you can see it's been fully redesigned from what it used to be, and they're gonna be offering some cloud storage soon as well, which is nice to see, so they'll have some more services available. On their other page here, you can see all the different platforms and uh, operating systems and devices that you can use Shadow on, and I've used Shadow on all kinds of different devices over the past three years or so, and it's worked great for me everywhere. You can click on Get Started, and they've got two plans right now, the old Boost here for $29.99, and the new Power Plan here, which is unfortunately out of stock while recording this but this is has gone in and out quite a bit so you just have to check in your area now over here on my uh, account you can see i'm at the 44.98 we'll talk more about pricing later you can cancel your subscription or reset your shadow pc here and you can also add more storage in your account which is really handy this goes in and out of stock as well but it's 256 gigs for 2.99 a month per 256 that you add now let's go over and take a look at the Shadow app really quickly. If you know all about the app, you can skip this part, but for those that don't, let's take a quick overview here of the app. Here's your general settings on how you want Shadow to work. Do you want it to shut down when you close your stream or not? You have your advanced settings for your quick menu and being able to reset all of your settings. Over here in video and display, you can start in windowed or full screen. I prefer windowed myself. And you have advanced settings here for things like the high efficiency video. Coding, we have color for 444, which is heavier on CPUs, but the options there. We have frame rates of 30, 40, 50, 60, and unlimited. We'll be on unlimited here because we are on a high refresh rate monitor and Shadow does a great job uh, matching those frames on your monitor. I'll leave audio quality at regular, but you have some adjustments you can make in there. And then of course, forwarding your USB devices and your controllers, you're able to do right in here as well. And then of course, important settings in our network for our megabits per second here, depending on what resolution you're streaming, we're gonna use 1440p in this video. So I'm gonna be at 60 megabits per second and go all the way up to 70. And this is really gonna depend on what your internet and what your network allows you for your experience, but this is gonna affect your latency and your picture quality. Now let's go ahead and start into Shadow because it's time to go ahead and start taking a look at the hardware that we get and what kind of performance we can expect when we're using the new Shadow Power Upgrade. And once you're in Shadow, you have this quick menu up here with Win, Alt, O, or you can click on it. This will now show you your frame rate, bandwidth, latency, and packet loss. I get around 25 milliseconds or so of latency. I used to get about 19 on boost fairly consistently, so I'm not sure what the difference is. I'm at the same distance from the, the data center, but still pretty good considering, and games play really well. Over in your video and display, you can do things now like dual screen streaming and that type of thing, but you can get more into those settings. I'm just going to go to full screen here on Shadow and get into Task Manager. So our CPU is the AMD Epic 32 core processor, and we're dealing with four core eight thread, and I, I get it because they can do double the system this way i wish we had eight core 16 thread i know that would be asking a lot but this does bottleneck some things and i'll show you that later on but much better than what we were dealing with on shadow boost we have 16 gigs of system ram it says 2400 megahertz here i'm not 100 sure if that's pulling the accurate number considering this is going through a virtual pc um, but everything's working well there 16 gigs we have two uh, disk here so we have our main c drive which is 256 that comes with our shadow for the 4498 and then i've added the additional 299 a month for another 256 gigs so i've got two drives here all of my games go on d until that runs out of space and then i move them to c and we have our A4500, which is an RTX capable, DLSS capable GPU. And this does a great job. It's around a 3070 in performance, but it is also doing all the encoding for our streaming here. So you can lose 10 to 20% in there, although it doesn't necessarily equate to that in game performance. You do lose some because it is busy doing the streaming as well, but it does perform very well. And of course has plenty of VRAM for everything we need to do there. Now let's move over to some Cinebench. And I wanted to run this to kind of compare some scores and see 
see what I get here with Shadow versus my local PC because I do have a 5600X in my local PC, so I was curious what the difference would be. We get a 5858 with the four core eight thread on Shadow, which isn't too bad kind of to be expected there. When I compare that to my local 5600X, I get an 8202. So obviously I wasn't expecting this to come up to a six core 12 thread local CPU, but this was just a good way to give you guys an example of kind of the performance you were getting with the CPU just based on some Cinebench scores. Now I also ran some Unigen superposition just to kind of get an idea of what scores we're getting on our GPU side of things and I got a 7914 fairly consistently in that range which was pretty close to the 3070s I found on the online results at around an 8549 and 8551. Considering what we're dealing with here in the streaming it's pretty close and not too bad for the A4500. Now let's take a look at three games that I've purposely chosen just to kind of give us an idea of some of the performance we're getting here with Shadow Power. I'm going to be testing games a lot with Shadow Power all this year and probably beyond. So new game releases, maybe some older games. So we'll go much more in depth in those videos. But in this overview to give an idea of what we got, you can see Spider-Man here running pretty much high everything with ray tracing. But we're running the CPU at 99 and 100% and not using as much of the GPU here. It's a very CPU heavy game and those four cores and eight threads do suffer here in the virtual PC. I go in here and turn off the ray tracing just to kind of take the, that off of the equation to see how we run and we are able to bring the CPU usage way down on that, knock up the GPU a little bit and of course our frame rate is going to be much much better. So obviously we could get a little higher frame rate with this if we had a beefier CPU but that said ray tracing is still very crushing in the game and can be hard to run. I did think we'd get to that 60 FPS mark but it's just not going to happen with that CPU usage and you can see here our frame times and our frame rate now with ray tracing off still high on everything is running really well even though we do get into that 85 to 90 percent usage still sometimes and we're not able to push the gpu like to really high numbers all the time we're still getting a great frame rate and a good experience here and the picture quality is really good as is the latency now i'll go in here and make some more changes to the settings just to show another example of what's happening with the cpu here for you We'll change the uh, traffic density, crowd density, um, hair quality, and weather particles just down the medium just to show you'll instantly see we dropped almost another 20%. It does bounce back up a little bit there, but we do gain some more even because those things actually do use the CPU a little bit more. And you could bring those densities down more if you want to take even more pressure off of the CPU side of things here with Shadow. But that being said, that's just kind of the way things are working here with that particular hardware. And overall, the game's running really well, even though we're not able to fully push everything. And it's a good experience here on Shadow. So let's go ahead and move on and take a quick look at Call of Duty. So I didn't jump into Warzone 2 just yet, but I was messing around in multiplayer and I have it with DLSS in pretty much high settings right now. So we're not maxing out the GPU, very much like Spider-Man. If you want to turn DLSS off in that game, you can up your GPU usage, but you don't gain a lot in frames. And I'll show an example of that here with Call of Duty as well. But just running around here on high with DLSS on, we're actually getting a great frame rate though. And the latency and everything feels great here with Shadow. And again, picture quality looks good with my high bit rate here. Now, jumping over here, I've turned off DLSS and left everything else the same. So you'll see that GPU usage is much higher now because, you know, we're using more of that uh, local grunt power there than we are with the DLSS upscaling happening. So, but it's very similar in FPS. So it's kind of a trade-off. I don't need DLSS because of the CPUs kind of holding things back. Um, but I can also turn it on or off just depending on the game. This Every game is going to kind of be affected differently. This is just to give you a general idea of kind of what we're working with when it comes to this hardware. Where, and you'll probably notice my only real gripe is wishing we had a little bit more CPU power to push things here, but I totally get from a business standpoint why we're at the four core and eight thread. But Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is running really well. I'll be testing Warzone 2 as well and many other games here on Shadow Power, so make sure you keep an eye out for those videos. Now let's move over to the final game I want to take a look at in this video. The Callisto Protocol is definitely a game that I fell in love with in 2022 and I'm still playing it now. I know it has its controversial reviews and I agree with most of the criticisms I hear about the game, but for me, for some reason, 
I just really enjoy the game and I've played it a ton on the Shadow Power upgrade here the past few weeks and it's been running really well. Between the patches and everything the devs have done to kind of smooth out a lot of the issues with the game, Shadow's also just running this game really well. And it's not just Shadow, this game seems to run decently in a lot of different cloud or virtual PC scenarios as to where other games kind of suffer in that environment when it comes to performance. So pretty happy with everything I've seen here with the Callisto Protocol. It's a game I'll definitely finish a full playthrough on Shadow. Shadow allows me to jump into this game anywhere. I've even used it to play on Steam Deck and on my TV. So it's been really great and this is just one of those games that I've really enjoyed having Shadow for to jump into and play and it's been working great. Again, picture quality has been really good. Of course, I'm running that 60 megabits per second here at 1440p. So you don't see a lot of blockiness and issues there, which is hard to show you on YouTube. But the input latency feels great and the picture quality is great here with shadow power and i'm not surprised because those things were usually pretty great with boost also except now we have the rtx 3070 equivalent power with the a4500 and a much better more capable cpu than over on boost while it still does hold us back at times and i'm looking forward to testing more games when it comes to that four core eight threads it certainly is better than what we were dealing with and i think in most games it's going to do just fine for now and I, again i totally understand the decision to chop that 32 core cpu up into four core eight thread but it does suffer from time to time as you can see but it's going to totally also depend on what you want to do to tweak your game settings what kind of games you're playing and that type of thing and when it comes to the price you have to remember you're getting a full windows 10 pc and while some people may grab shadow just for gaming it can do pretty much everything that your windows pc can do from editing videos and running your youtube channel social media work and anything else and it runs on just about anything making it really easy to run a full-blown pc just about anywhere that you have decent internet so so if you compare it to other cloud PC options out there, I still think Shadow offers one of the best experiences you can get for the money. I do have some gripes about the CPU even though it's much better now, but it is working well. And also the storage, I do wish it came with more than 256 because you really can't do much with that these days. But other than that, I do like the Shadow Power upgrade here and I'll be testing a lot more in the future. Thanks a lot for coming and check out the video as always guys, I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one.